So in this video, I want to talk about a Note in ASMI Y14.5 2009. It's an exception to rule number one, and it, it's kind of tricky, right? So what it says is page, page 28, section 2.7.2, .2, and the forum control does not apply uh, exceptions to rule number one. So what it says is that and it's B, right, uh, you know, parentheses with a little B, part subject to free state variation in the unrestrained condition. So what exactly is free state variation in the unrestrained uh, condition? Well, it refers you over to the section on form tolerances, and it says, it's like a paragraph, but it basically says non-rigid parts, and it gives a subjective description for non-rigid parts. It says something with a thin wall compared to its diameter or something that could uh, change after uh, manufacturing. So you would typically think, you know, like a gasket or something made out of rubber or something kind of flimsy. This is still a subjective definition though, right? What is rigid and what is non-rigid? Because what this rule is saying, items subject to variation in the free state condition do not have to uh, adhere to rule number one. Of course, rule number one means you have to have perfect form at MMC. This is kind of tricky because it's subject to interpretation, right? The idea would be that you'd put a note on the drawing that says non-rigid, but it doesn't say to do that, right? It leaves it up to whoever's inspecting the part to basically to decide whether it's a rigid part or a non-rigid part, and they could invoke this rule to override rule number one. Now, I was thinking about this, I was running one day and I saw, a, I'll put a picture right here, a railroad track, right? So, you know, if you have two feet of railroad track, that's a rigid part, no, absolutely no doubt, right? But if you have a hundred feet of it, right now it's not, uh, it's a non-rigid part just by changing the length. So one of them, you could achieve perfect form at MMC pretty easy, but that 100 foot section, there'd be really no way to check that. So what I'm getting at here is that it's something you wanna watch out for. You know, Hopefully if it's obviously a rigid part, you know, something machined or cast, that this would never come up. But if you do have a part that's like rubber or a gasket material or something that flexes, something real thin like an O-ring, you might want to consider this and either put a, a note on the drawing that says, hey, this is a non-rigid part, you know, rule number one doesn't apply here, or put a note on there that says, hey, we consider this a rigid part, so don't use this exception to rule number one. Perfect form does apply here. Now, hopefully it doesn't come up, but for anything somebody might be able to consider non-rigid, I consider using a note here. I also want to say that this is not in the 2018 standard. They pulled this out. In the 2018 standard on page 36, section 5.8.2, it says that uh, number B, or parentheses little b, tolerances applied with free state modifier do not have to adhere to rule number one. So the 2018 standard says, no, you have to specify in the drawing. The 2009 standard kind of leaves it up to interpretation. I went and checked the 1982 standard and the 2009 or uh, 1994 standard also agree with 2009. They have this parts with free state variation and the unrestrained condition don't have to apply to rule number one. So this was from at least 1982, 1994, 2009, and they got rid of it for 2018. So just to keep in mind something you want to, you know, might want to add an extra note on the drawing just to cover yourself if this might be a problem. So if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below, especially if you've ever had a problem with this, right? Let me know if you've ever had a part that somebody said, hey, this is non-rigid, rule number one doesn't apply, and that's not what you wanted. So I'll see you next time.